says Shalom, Shalom. First and foremost, as always, before we get started, I want to start off by giving our praise, our honor, and our infinite glory and to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rachak with us. Yahweh being the one true name of the Heavenly Father, who the world so ignorantly calls God. Yahweh Shai being the one true name of his only begotten Son, who the world so ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. Bahashim means in the name and the Rachak with us being the Holy Spirit. All right, double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who tell us his truth and who do it well as well as peace, blessings, and many salutations to the sincere brothers pushing this word throughout the four corners of the earth that are given all diligence to ensure their calling of election. All right. And uh, just real quick, man, just a quick lesson. It won't be too long, Lord willing. Um, I just wanted to go into the account of Jonah. Um, and, you know, of course, tying into that, man, how it's absolutely a necessity in this walk of ours to fear. Yeah, how about Shimei Oshai, man? Okay. Um, that word fear going back to, uh, you know, reverence and respect. OK, you know, the Lord has has opened this book, you know, has unlocked these seals and has opened this this knowledge, wisdom and understanding unto us. OK, so with that, we have to reciprocate that energy by doing, OK, what what is required of us, man. OK, because this thing hasn't been made manifest unto the world. OK, it hasn't been made manifest unto many, but very few. OK, you know, the scripture says, you know, many are called, few are chosen, <clears throat> but. At the end of the day, when you think about it, man, that many that are called isn't really that much when it comes down to the entirety of Israel, let alone the entirety of the population of the world in itself. You know, so like I said, man, want to go uh, into the book of Jonah. But first and foremost, actually, let's start with this. Um, this is the book of Second Corinthians. Chapter five and. Uh, <clears throat> The start of 10, it says, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Hamashiach, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad, right? So we're all going to receive judgment at the end of the day, man. You know, we're going to receive a reward, a recompense, whether it be a good reward or a bad reward, you know. But the point being right here in verse 11, it says, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord we persuade men, and that's really all I wanted to get out of that verse 11, but through the terror of the Lord, okay, we persuade persuade men, okay, because you have many different things going on in the world today, man, when this is all the works of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh man, okay, you know, and, and, and many people don't want to be in these particular situations, you know, many people don't want to uh, uh, have to, um, you know, I mean, you got instances of people being, you know, uh, torture to death, man. You got instances of people being stabbed to death. You got instances of people dying in a plane crash and a car wreck. And I mean, it's just so many ways, you know, what's that show? A thousand ways to die. You know, it's so many ways you could go choking on a piece of bubble gum. Right. I mean, just drowning, you know, being caught on fire. Okay. You know, judgment comes in many different ways. And, 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 and with that also, you know, chastisement, OK, which chastisement is more like a, a a correction, you know, a slap on the wrist, if you will. You know, because we know in the book of Job, um, I believe it's the fifth chapter, you know, the Lord chastises those that he loves, man. All right. And Jonah was an example of that, man. So let's go ahead and get that in Jonah. All right. We'll start at the first chapter. And just read on from the first verse. OK. And like it says, man, Jonah's disobedience, you know, ultimately, you know, obedience leads to uh, life, man, and, he, and glory, you know. The disobedience leads to chastisement and can ultimately lead to a severe judgment, you know, which can be fatal. Um, but <clears throat> this is the book of Jonah, chapter one and verse one. It says, now the word of the Lord, Yahweh, came unto Jonah, the son of, of Amittai, saying, arise, go to Nineveh that great city and cry against it for their wickedness is come up before me. Okay. So just as today, man, we're here prophets in Babylon, the great America. Okay. We're prophesying against this kingdom. Just as Yahweh said when he was on the scene and his disciples, okay. They prophesied against the Roman empire, right? They prophesied against, uh, uh, uh you know, the Caesars and et cetera, et cetera. All right. And we're prophesying against this kingdom, right? Because we're captives in this kingdom. Okay. We have the understanding of uh, who America is in the scriptures. 
okay, who the self-proclaimed white man is in the scriptures, okay? The Idunians, man, the, the self-proclaimed white people are Edomites, okay? And they have a sore judgment uh, uh, coming unto them, thus saith the Bible, man, okay? Thus saith the inspired word of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, all right? But like it says, man, the, the Lord told uh, Jonah to arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, right? Jeremiah 28 and 8, you know, let's go ahead and grab that real quick, just to make that point, okay? Jeremiah 28 and 8, it says, the prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesied both against many countries and against great kingdoms of war and of evil and of pestilence. And that's the same thing we're doing today, man. We're letting these people know that America has a, has a, uh, a, uh, a tab that has yet to be paid, man. Okay. And they just been building up this, this debt, you know, and, and pretty soon filing for bankruptcy, right. <laughs> you know, so to speak, but at the end of the day, they're going to have to pay one way or another. All right. But it says, uh, back in Jonah chapter one, verse three, it says, but Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish. Okay. So he, he was like, man, you know, scratch that. I'm not going to, I'm not going to, uh, Nineveh, man. He said, I'm going to Tarshish. Okay. He said, it says, uh, unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord, Yahweh, and went down to Joppa and he found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare thereof and went down into it to go with them unto Tarshish from the presence of Yahweh. Okay. But Yahweh sent out a great wind into the sea and there was a mighty tempest in the sea so that the ship was like to be broken. So such a strong wind and, you know, you can imagine the waves coming from that. OK, you know, a very great storm. OK, because of what Jonah's disobedience. OK, it says then the ma mariners were afraid and cried every man into his power. OK, and cast forth because they didn't all believe in the same same uh, uh, power. Right. Same God. They, they believed in different gods. It says and cast forth the wares that were in the ship into the sea to lighten it of them. OK, but Jonah was gone down into the size of the ship and he lay and was fast asleep. OK, OK. Verse six, it says, so the shipmaster came to him and said unto him, what meanest thou, O sleeper? Arise, call upon thy God. If so be that God will think upon us that we perish not. OK. It says so they so they ultimately knew it was Jonah, man. All right. But it says uh, verse seven. And they said, every one of his fellow come and let us cast lots. And we that we may know for whose cause this evil is upon us. So they cast lots and the lot fell upon Jonah. Right. Like like I said, the lot. Casting a lot is like um, like, um, you know, flipping a coin or something, you know, it's it's uh, it's making a, a guess, so to speak, you know, an estimated guess. OK, it says um, and, the, and the lot fell upon Jonah, then said they unto upon or unto him, tell us, we pray thee. For whose cause this evil is upon us? What is thine occupation? And whence comest thou? What is thy country? And of what people art thou? And he said unto them, I am, in he I am a Hebrew, and I fear the Lord Yahweh, the God of heaven, which ma hath made the sea and the dry land. Then were the men ex exceedingly afraid and said unto him, Why hast thou done this? For the men knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord because he had told them. OK, so he told them what happened. You know, they're like, hey, my, my power, Yahweh Shai told me to go to Nineveh. But hey, guess what? I wanted to go to Tarshish. And that's that's why they were in this predicament out on the sea, man, with raging winds and, and seas. You know, it says uh, verse 11. Then said they unto him, what shall we do unto thee that the sea might may be calm unto us for the sea rot and was temp tempestuous. So like you tempest tempestous. OK. Let's just get that word just to see what it means. <clears throat> you know, to storm, rage, okay, to be enraged. So the sea was was in a rage, man, okay? But like it says, uh, verse 13 or verse 12, it says, And he said unto them, Take me up and cast me forth into the sea, so shall the sea be calm unto you. For I know that for my sake this great tempest is upon you, right? It says, Nevertheless, the men rode hard to bring it to the land but they could not for the sea rot and was tempestuous against them right wherefore they cried unto the lord yahweh and said we beseech thee o, o lord 
We beseech thee, let us not perish for this man's life and lay not upon us innocent blood for thou, O Lord, hast done as it pleased thee. So they took up Jonah and cast him forth into the sea and the sea ceased from her raging. Okay. And it says, then the men feared the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, exceedingly and offered a sacrifice unto Yahweh and made vows. Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights, man. So this is chastisement for old Jonah's disobedience. Okay, the Lord put him in a great fish. You know, you got to imagine that three days and three nights, man. Okay, you know, imagine his skin when he got out of that. I mean, you sit in a shower too long or something, you know, you be out in a swimming pool or in a lake too long, right? Your, 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 your uh, fingers and your feet be all, you know, uh, pruny and stuff. So you can imagine he's probably up to his neck, you know, the, the the great fish doing his thing, you know, not even worried about Jonah in his belly. OK, just moving around as, as he pleased. You can imagine Jonah just constantly three days having a fight to to stay awake and to not be drowned by the water. That's probably up to his neck. man. OK, so that's a, that, I mean, the Lord has many ways to get us, man. The Lord can make, you know. <laughs> You can make an 18 wheeler just, you know, a driver fall asleep and just completely, you know, derail and, and start heading in the, the direction of this building, man. OK. You know, so through the terror of Yahweh Shem Shai, we persuade men, man. OK, because it's a it's a, a reasonable thing to fear the Lord, man. OK, but let me go ahead and jump back to the book of Jonah. This is the second chapter in the first verse. It says, then Jonah prayed unto the Lord, his power out of the fish's belly and said, I cried by reason of mine affliction unto the Lord. And he heard me out of the belly of hell cried I, and thou heardest my voice. And this goes to show real quick that this, he said out of the belly of the, of hell, this goes to show that hell is a condition, man. One of the, one of the uh, definitions of hell in the Bible is a condition, man. And the other is the grave. It's not this underground world where you just burn for eternity, man. That'd be unrighteous of the Heavenly Father to, to, to torment somebody for eternity, man. Like, what the hell? No, the Lord always gives you opportunity to repent. And he always, uh, you know, he punishes you. But, you know, you get you get a chance to make it right, so to speak, man. All right. But it says, out of the belly of hell cried I, and thou heardest my voice. OK, it says, for thou hadst, for thou hadst cast me into the deep in the midst of the seas, and the floods can pass me about. All thy billows and thy waves pass over me. Then I said, I am I am cast out of thy sight, yet I will look again toward thy holy temple. All right. The waters can pass me about, even to the soul. The depth closed me round, round about. The weeds were wrapped around my head. I went down to the bottom of the mountains. The earth with her bars was was about me forever. Yet hast thou brought up, up my life from corruption, O Yahweh, my power. When my soul fainted within me, I remembered Yahweh, and my prayer came, and my prayer came in unto thee, into thy holy temple. They that observe laying uh, vanities forsake their own mercy, but I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that I have vowed salvation is of the Lord. Okay, so the you know, Jonah is just weeping and pleading unto the Lord, like you know, I know I messed up. I know I, you know, went off, but man, look, this is powerful, man. He says, I will pay that, that I have vowed, man. Okay. And what did, what does this say about, uh, when, when thou makest a vow? Okay. Let's see, it's in Ecclesiastes. Let's see, just bear with me. Ecclesiastes 5 and 4. Here we go. All right. It says, when thou vowest a vow, right? Because, you know, what did Jonah say, man? Let's go back to it real quick. Just so I can paint the picture, Lord willing. Um, Jonah chapter 2 and um, verse 9, it says, but I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. Right. And that's the same spirit we have to be in, man. No matter what we're going through. 
Okay, knowing that this thing has been open unto us, man, the Lord has, has given the unction, man. He's given that anointing, man. All right. But it said, he said, I will pay that that I have vowed. Okay. The, uh, Jonah said, I will pay that that I have vowed, man. All right. So this is Ecclesiastes 5 and 4. It says, when thou vowest a vow unto Yahweh, defer not to pay it, for he hath no pleasure in fools. Pay that which thou hast vowed. Okay. Better is it that thou shouldest not vow than that thou vow shouldest vow and not pay. Okay. And that makes me think of, uh, you know, in the New Testament, you know, when Yahweh Shai was talking about, uh, you know, Revelation, the third chapter, I believe, the 15th verse, you know. The Lord would rather you just be a completely wicked ass nigga, man, than to be in between wicked and righteous. You know, either be righteous or be wicked, man. Don't be no in between. OK. But when thou makest a vow, defer not to pay it, man. So you better, you know, you you make a vow to the, the creator. OK, your hey, word is bond, man. You know, and I know today that doesn't hold much value amongst these pe these people these days, man. OK, but back in the ancient ancient world, man. You know, if you gave your word, that was that was bond, man. That was that was a vow. And if you did defer not to pay that, uh, uh, you know, not to hold up your your end of the bargain, so to speak. Hey, that was a, a severe punishment coming unto you, man. You know how much more so that the creator of the heavens and the earth, you know. So the, so Jonah back in Jonah two and nine, you know, he, he said, what I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that that I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord Yahweh Shem Shai, man. Okay, so he 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 came humbly, he came correct, and he he was like, man, I fucked up. You know, he was in that, in that state of humility, man, which is which is uh, uh, good, man. You know, and what came from that? What came from his sincerity and his prayers and his in his uh, after his chastisement was complete and he understood the errors of his ways and how he needs to do what the Lord told him to do. What came after that? Verse ten. And the Lord Yahweh spake unto the fish, and it vomited out Jonah upon the dry land. Okay. So that was really the point, man. Uh, I got two more precepts I want to grab. Um, let's see. Bear with me. <clears throat> let's see. Because we actually have an opportunity, man. Like, we literally have a chance at this thing, you know. We have hope. We have hope, man. Okay. Um. So this is the book of Sirach, chapter 23, and verse 18. It says, a man that breaketh wedlock, saying thus in his heart, who seeth me? I am compassed about with darkness. The walls cover me, and nobody seeth me. What need I to fear? The most high will not remember my sins. Okay. And that's pride, man. That's pride. Cause it tells you in the book of Sirach, the fifth chapter that the most high will no, will no wise let thee go, man. You know, but when in, in your state of security, you know, when you, when you least expect it, the Lord will bring that swift judgment upon you, man. All right. Catch you, catch you off guard. Right. And that'd be the worst when you're not prepared for it. Okay. But this is straight pride, man. This man is in his own room with the four walls and the ceiling, you know, the blinds closed on his window. He's like, hey, what, what need I to fear, man? The Most High doesn't see me. Okay, verse 19, such a man only feareth the eyes of men and knoweth not that the eyes of the Lord are 10,000 times brighter than the sun, beholding all the ways of men and considering the most secret parts. Okay, so there's nothing that can be hid, man. Jonah thought he was he was slick, you know. Look what happened to him, man. All right, you know you have these these accounts in the scriptures for a reason, man. Of men totally, you know. Hey, you got the uh, the account of, uh, and we often bring it out, man. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego being casted into that fiery furnace. Okay, hey, man. They didn't they didn't uh, go weary in the faith, man, or they didn't uh, uh, you know get weary in the hope. Of Yahweh Bashim Yahshai, no, they, what they said, whatever's going to come, you know, it's going to come. But we trust in our power. We're not bowing down to, the, to that image, man, that golden statue. Okay. 
but that was a point, man. We could we could end it off there. Um, Lord, when this was edifying, man. All right. I want to give an all praise, all honor, and all infinite glory unto Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Rakhak with us. Double honors again unto the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who taught us this truth and who do it well, as well as peace, blessings, and many salutations to the sincere brothers pushing this word throughout the four corners of the earth that are given our diligence to ensure their calling election. Shalom.